Uh, it's bringing you back for video number two of the Mazak mission, as I like to call it. Uh, for those who are not up to speed with what's happening, is you're just going through and doing videos of uh, rebuilding a CNC lathe or Mazak CNC lathe, and just bring you in on short videos along the way of things that could be interesting. Uh, try to keep the videos fairly short and just show it in stages as I'm uh, disassembling and reassembling different parts that um, could be of interest and just keep you guys up to date with where I am. So just most of the parts I've got here at the moment are from the um, motor area at the moment, electric motor. Uh, just working on this part at the moment. So just cleaning all the mating surfaces at the moment, uh, just getting it ready for painting. Uh, so this will be, uh, it is tempting just to go through and blast these surfaces and uh, repaint them in a, a two-pack black uh, that's specially formulated for spraying over uh, blasted surfaces. But I have to sort of control myself a little bit with what I do and don't do. Uh, I don't need to make the machine into concourse condition. It's not going into the Mazak Museum in Japan or anything like that, so I need to control myself a little bit. Which just brings us sort of this part here. It's ironic that this part's similar colour to my machine because the original colour was green. But so this is the ZXS um, uh, servo motor mount. I just thought I'd show you that because I did mention it in the last video. So the servo bolts on from this side here. Uh, just going through, as I say, clean up the mating surfaces. So we've got a nice um, surface to bolt back to. Nothing, no burrs or, or nicks or anything like that. Make sure there's anything. Uh, not holding it away from the surface, so just making sure that everything's nice and clean. Uh, just clean it with a, uh, a 3M Scotch Bright, uh, different grits for different types of metals. Uh, this is the foot mount uh, for that last part I showed you, so that just fits into this area here, so it gives you your adjustment for your V belts. Uh, so I'll just show you that on the machine where that bolts on. Uh, the one behind there is the adjustment screw, so we have an M24 thread that um, goes through here. So that's your adjustment for, as I say, the uh, adjust the V-belts. Uh, so this will be, this sm smaller parts like this will be uh, blasted and repainted, but um, most of the larger parts, which this one's not too bad, I'll probably just be deglazing these and repainting these. I, I probably, it is tempting just to go crazy and blast everything, but I do have to control myself with the time that I spend on this machine. Uh, it's taken me long enough to get to this point. I don't need to drag it on for another two years trying to get it back together. Uh, this is the cover off the, some of these grey parts you might recognise from the previous uh, video that we've already posted. Uh, this is the <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> uh, electrical junction box where the cables come into the motor itself. So at the moment I look a bit grotty, so all I'm doing at the moment is just cleaning everything at the moment. So these parts have come straight from the wash. Uh, just putting up my bench, getting them ready for uh, masking off and blasting. So these surfaces will be uh, sandblasted, so give it a nice uh, surface to adhere to. So it's been aluminium, doesn't paint, doesn't stick to it very well. It wasn't too bad inside, it's pretty clean from what it was already. Um, there is a little bit of a you know, little bit surface dirty in there, but I didn't go crazy removing too much inside there. Just took the bulk of the main uh, components that are inside there. Um, to take out to be able to clean it. I don't want to disassemble too much. We've got too many loose pieces to start to lose parts otherwise. Uh, the main cable comes in through the side here and enters in through the top of the motor, which will make more sense in a second. I'll show you the electric motor itself. Uh, that's one of the covers uh, around the outside of the motor. Uh, left and right hand covers. So as I say, they'll be, they'll be all blasted and repainted back into a uh, heat proof paint. Um, not so much because of the heat, but um, just give that um, low gloss finish to um, for the uh, heat to dissipate a lot better from um, from a heat source like an electric motor. Um, same thing again uh, on the top of the uh, electric motor, the cover over the top. So you might remember this when looking through this hole in the previous video again. Um, looking down inside, uh, this is the cover. So as I say, just getting everything cleaned up, ready for blasting. I need to get everything cleaned up before I put it into blast. And any um, dints or anything, but I can't really sort of see anything at the moment. There's nothing really be dinted or anything, but I'll be sort of fixing like things, fixing things like that along the way when need to, so that I'll be um, uh, blasted. It's it's tempting just to send it to, to sandblast and and um, have them powder coated, but the powder coat um, normally has a normally a fairly glossy finish, and it's probably not the best thing to use, as I say, around uh, heat sources. And same thing with electric motor that I'll be getting. Um, cleaned up and repainted. So I'll take you out quickly and just show you the motor itself. 
They've got the motor sitting on the floor at the moment. So this is the main spindle motor. Those covers come off. You can sort of see the, the, raised, cut, uh, the raised end there where the covers uh, screw on there and they just protrude out, come over the top of the motor here. Uh, the the uh, junction box sits here. So this is the cabling coming up into that junction box. So that just screws directly onto here. It is tempting just to hit it with um, like a truck wash or some sort of detergent, hit it with a high pressure cleaner, but I don't want to get any water into this, uh, in through this port here. Um, but I will be getting totally disassembled and uh, checking all the bearings. It is smooth, um, but it is the spindle motor, it's main spindle motor. So it's, you know, it was all running at the machine replaced when, when um, I did look at the machine, I did fire it all up and there's no noise in the machine itself. It's uh, actually very good for its age. But it's just a matter of going through and just checking things out, make sure there's nothing in there that I should have checked when the motor was out. It, it, it weighs about 160 kilos. I did weigh it when I was um, lifting it up onto the bench. I did have an electronic scale, so I did weigh it uh, just out of curiosity to see how much it does weigh. Uh, so I don't really want to be manhandling this out of the machine later. Um, it's got the... Um, it gets lowered in from above, and so I don't really want to be uh, mucking around um, trying to get that manhandle, as I say, out of the machine again to do something I should have already done. Um, the um, this screw here, which is um, for the adjustment for the actual uh, that plate that I was showing you a minute ago, so that's the adjustment screw there. So I've just gone through and um, cleaned that up, uh, just uh, reamed all the thread to remove any nicks and burrs and things like that. And you'll get to see a little bit of this end of the machine for a little while down the working end. So that foot mount, <coughs> so a bit of sun behind me at the moment. So that foot mount comes into here, and we have little um, bushings that come off here. So we have the same uh, spigot machines into the back of the foot mount, so it keeps it into correct alignment. So that can go back on. Once it's it's fairly straightforward. Once the uh, all those parts are cleaned and, and repainted, it's just a matter of bolting it back together. That's that's a time consuming part. It's just cleaning everything and. Uh, repainting a lot of the things uh, as I mentioned before the electric uh, the electric the hydraulic tank sits in here um, the servo motor mounts up here as I mentioned uh, that servo motor mount I showed you I have a bit of cabling here so this is the main uh, supply from the uh, from the electrical cabinet out to the actual spindle motor so this is all the cabling so the individual cables because it's a fairly uh, hydro cable uh, so individual cables for the actual um, su power supply to the to the actual motor. Uh, being a twenty horsepower motor, it does draw a fair bit of uh, does draw a fair bit of power. So I've just gone through and cleaned all these cables, um, all the terminals. I've cleaned with the wire wheel to remove any burrs and and any crap that's on the end there. But I gave it gave them all a pretty good wash. So all, these are all sitting here clean now, ready to go back on. They weren't too bad. This is the the uh, flexible conduit over the top. This was absolutely covered in uh, crud, um, but it looks like brand new now, as you guys can probably see just looking at it through the camera myself, actually surprising how good it's come up. I thought it mightn't come up that good, but it actually came out like brand new, but this took me a little while to clean this up. But that's all the general idea is, just going through cleaning everything up, uh, making everything look like new without going crazy, but at the same time spending a bit of individual time on individual parts, uh, making everything look good. Uh, it just helps to diagnose problems when um, when the machine's going that you don't have um, dirty parts and things like that. It, it is it does create some problems uh, if the parts aren't clean and make sure when the, the uh, machine goes back together it looks as good as what it does in in the in the video that you guys are seeing. So going through the trouble to blast the whole base, so there's no point to to cut corners and um, not do the job properly. But some of the cabling uh, we'll be replacing. For some reason, there's a join in the cable here. Not that it's a big deal for you guys, but you know, there's just some of the things to mention along the way. Uh, the cabling, some of the cabling we we're replacing. For some reason, this runs up into the, it's got a join in the junction box itself. But I'll be doing away with that and just running uh, uh, sort of like that heavy insulated type of cable uh, from the control box. Uh, sorry, from the main board all the way out to the motor itself. So I'll be replacing this cable for that reason, just to try to eliminate any unforeseen problems that might come up later. They, they obviously is going to work because it was running before, but it just helps to get things like that out of the way, and I can reuse that cable for other for other things anyway, so it won't be going into the bin. But um, 
The jacking screws here have just gone through and reamed all the threads, so any bruising and things like that, uh, just reamed all these threads to make sure that they're going to run smooth because these are the adjustment screws to set the, uh, the level of the machine. So I've just gone through uh, ream and uh, wire wheel these to clean any of the um, surface crap out of there. So that's all I'm basically doing. There is a little bit of pitting at the bottom there, but not too bad. It's mainly what I wanted to fix, and there was a couple of bruised threads in there where it probably just been knocked. Uh, so just kind of fixing, fixing things like that up. Uh, you probably can't really just show up a little bit, and you can see a little bit of pitting in there because it does protrude from the casting a little way to get the, the adjustment. There's, four, there's seven of these um, adjusting screws all together, three are on the machine at the moment. So it's just going through and cleaning things like that. I'm just getting it ready to put back together. Uh, there's not much else I can sort of show you in that. I will bring you back when we get on to um, rebuilding, or well, not rebuilding, pulling this motor apart to some degree, rebuilding, just checking bearings out and things like that. But it is fairly smooth. But I will bring you back um, in the next video just to get this motor cleaned up and uh, or disassembled or disassembled and cleaned. And um, I'll just show you a little bit of that inside and so on, just for a quick video, which is trying to keep the video short and keep these guys up to date what I'm up to and just bring in at different stages as I'm uh, working through my Mazak mission and just showing these guys what I'm up to at the time and trying to include as much information without going overboard. All right, that'll probably do for this video. I look forward to seeing you guys back on the next one. Okay, bye for now.